Hey everyone, Alex the Critic here, and the clip that you're about to watch is from a new podcast that I'm going to be starting with my friends, Spaceman101 and Travis, called Close the Tab. If you enjoy it, then please consider subscribing to the Close the Tab channel. Keep in mind that there's nothing on it yet because I'm still editing our first episode, but we'll have a ton of fun stuff on there soon. Oh, and as for me, I've got a super good video on a certain YouTuber's controversy that's in the works, so be on the lookout for that. Until then, enjoy me and my friends ranting about the worst anime that we've ever seen. For those of you who are, um, who don't know what we're talking about, me and uh, Spaceman watched um, the anime Ero Manga Sensei. Oh, no. All the way through yep, in one all sitting. in one sitting. <laughs> and uh, here's the basic uh, summary of what it's about. It's a rom-com anime about a, a kid who is a writer. And he has a, uh, a sister who's a shut-in and is also an artist. And uh, she, like, the sister is the person who draws the, the manga, like, she provides the illustration for the uh, the books that the brother writes, but they don't know that until like about halfway through the first episode, I think. Yeah. So the entire series is basically about the brother discovering what his sister does and the two of them uh, building, like rebuilding their relationship. But it gets really, really sketchy, like throughout the series. Definitely. It's straight up an incest anime that just doesn't go all the way with it. But like, yeah, it was a man. There was a journey. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I felt like a broken man at the end of it. Like the character, the, the character they kept focusing on had very little to do with like the actual like uh like they did barely no story or at all. And then like then you also have um you also have some characters where it's just like oh, they show up once or twice and that's it like the most relate the most good character that were they were was literally the boss of the the brother of, of the brother yeah and the the off care the side character of a so, yeah, there's a a side character gets introduced i think it's the second episode i'm not sure but yeah pretty episode. early on in the series uh, second episode. this side character uh gets introduced and she's like a popular writer named elf yamada i think and Elf is uh, this, like, bratty girl who starts off as, like, the rival to the brother because they're both competing for a publishing spot at their uh, company that they work for. And um, she gets the most character development throughout this the series. Yeah. Like, she's the only character who actually is interesting. Which is so weird because, like, okay, you have the character that, you know, the whole show is focusing on, but then... The side character gets the most character arcs out of everyone. She starts off with, like, rival. Like, I'm going to defeat you. Then she goes into, like, the crush mode where it's like, ah, oh, yes, I do actually like the main character. And then from there, she starts building up into that relationship. She does, like, flirting. She does dating. She does all this stuff. Yeah, the, the, the series ships the two of them hard for, like, most of it. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> and then... My gosh, there's so I don't even know if this I should be saying it or not, but oh, like so many of the characters just start off like horny, like hell. <laughs> it's they they lay it on so thick. Yeah, like, pun intended. Like what the third <clears throat> episode straight <laughs> off the bat is a high schooler girl who comes to like try to get the little sister to school, right? But the yeah. thing she straight up does is like she starts flirting with like the brother, and it's like, oh, oh my god, the way that that she introduces herself to the brother is so cringy. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I, remember that. I don't remember exactly what she said, but the like the summary of their conversation is like, um, just, just her that. asking if she if, if he finds her attractive or not, attractive. and then yeah, because uh, I think that's. Cause like, cause wasn't something at some point like wasn't one of the questions like she want like she was like, hey, would you sleep with me or something? <laughs> wasn't that one of the things? Yeah, and then when he when he like doesn't like respond or doesn't like uh, feed into her or enable her, she's like, oh, what are you gay? I remember. <laughs> yeah, and, like it's... wasn't the wasn't like like wasn't the worst part was the fact that like he's like somehow the sister was hearing it because like he like FaceTimed her or something. 
and he like kept his phone like secret or like you know no, the, the girl that, the that's... girl was like she had the phone in the background she was like doing her own thing oh wait oh, no, no, yeah. that's late that we're talking wait. about like the second half of the episode the second half where oh um, yeah the the brother gets the sister to talk to the school girl but it has to be through like uh the a headset he's wearing or like an, an earphone mm-hmm. and uh the sister basically feeds him lines to say, and it's like a fucking James Bond operation. Yeah. <laughs> um. But the thing yeah. is, the schoolgirl she has her phone out like in secret, and she's secretly recording the conversation she's having with the uh, the brother and the sister. And the show never like reveals what exactly she was doing. She was just recording them for no reason. Yeah. Man, I'm just man, I'm just saying, watch as they come out with, like, season two, and it's completely different from season one. And, like, they figure, then it's, like, it delves into the whole, like, oh, it's because uh, we're with the FBI or something. And <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Like, what is it? Can you imagine I, that? I don't want to skip to the end, but, my gosh, it gets even worse. That reminds me of a joke we made about the school girl being part of a secret to catch a, to catch a predator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was she's an undercover agent i swear to god yeah she's an undercover the agent. whole time she yeah. was like trying to flirt with a guy it's like come on and she's also like trying to say like oh are you sleeping with your sister at all it's like what the heck and it's just, yeah because oh my gosh. yeah because like isn't the guy supposed to be in college or something yes he, he is. graduated didn't he yes yeah and he's like, like an the, adult and, yes and like the and he's like what is his little his little sister <laughs> So it would it would make sense if this entire ep- the entire anime was just like a build up to like the catch a predator. <laughs> <laughs> that would the final the crazy. final episode the final episode is just like them like taking the brother away and then the chick is like here's a recording of all the things your brother have said. That <laughs> that would version. be amazing. That would <laughs> if, if that's what happens in season two. I'm watching season two. One of the things I hated about the series the most well there were two things. One was all of the really unnecessary and gratuitous shots of the sister in sexual poses yeah that just felt really uncomfortable because she's definitely underage and i i don't get it i don't get I'm japan's pretty sure, fascination I'm pretty sure, with that shit i'm pretty sure the anime was just trying to appeal to the lolly <laughs> yeah I don't like, like what is it. it remember when we were looking at like the 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 reviews and one of them, and one of them was like, eh, it's it's a it's if you're brain dead, it's an okay show. Yeah, and, if but you turn off way too much fan fix. <laughs> if you don't think about it too hard, if you just take it at face value, you know, like just just a brother loving sister. <laughs> no need to like investigate this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Oh wait. God. Yeah. No. Wait. Hold on. Wait. 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 Wait, I feel like I feel like they probably got away with it because didn't they? Uh, didn't they say that like they're not related by blood? They are. Yeah, they're like step siblings. That's fun. <laughs> That's the cop out that all anime uses, though. Yeah, all anime. Like, they're uses, always though. either like step siblings or like half siblings, or, or like or cousins. Some shit. Yeah, or cousins. Or, yeah, with sort of on lines. Uh, oh yeah, we're cousins, but oh, dude, I hate I hated that so much. <laughs> As if it couldn't get any worse, they had to, like, tack that shit on. You know, like, I gotta say, the show is, like, is ridiculously crazy. Like, like, what is it? Is it the fourth episode that we get introduced to, like, the elf girl being the neighbor? Before you get into that, spaceman, <laughs> uh, we gotta, um, the, the second issue with this show is how much time is dedicated to stories that go nowhere. Oh my gosh, it's so true! so much filler <laughs> in this series. <laughs> the whole series literally, you want fillers? We have two sets of fillers for you. A filler in the beginning and a filler at the end. And then also a little bit of plot in between. And it's like, my it's so- god! <laughs> You'll just wind up with several episodes that go nowhere and teach us nothing about the characters. Yep. Such as the the haunted house episode where we get introduced to well not introduced but like the the rival author moves next door to the brother, and uh, their first interaction is he catches her playing the piano while she's nude. <laughs> yeah, like, straight up. And then what is it? It doesn't even stop there. Like they get to the door, and then the uh, what is it? She's like starts like, oh, you're a peeping tom, blah blah blah. And then and then like the, what is it? She straight up admits like, yeah, I'm a nudist. So what? 
you got a problem with it? <laughs> I was like, she's literally just like, this is the part where they just confirm her character as a nudist pianist. The thing that's so stupid about the way that this series is written is that after the brother catches um, Elf do playing piano while she's naked, um, she freaks out at him and calls him the pervert for catching her playing piano naked. And when she yeah. didn't, she did not do anything to hide herself. She left the windows open. She left the curtains open. Yeah. She was doing this shit out in the open. And yet she's going to call him the pervert just because he caught her doing that. <laughs> yo, that's like, yo, 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 that's like, imagine, imagine a little kid just going up to an adult. And being like, hey, mister, would you like to have sex with me? And the adult's like, what? And he, this kid's just going like, he's a pedophile. <laughs> yeah, he, he does a double, like, say, he's like, oh, would you like to, like, be horny with me? No. Oh, you're such a pervert. What? <laughs> or, or, or you're gay. Yeah. Or you're gay. <laughs> gay. <laughs> Man. Man, so basically, basically what I'm getting from the anime is that if you're not into children, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, that's the implication they give. <laughs> oh my gosh, it gets so much ridiculous too. Like, what is it? I don't know. Like, what pacing we're doing about the show? We're, the we're going episode by episode. Okay. So, uh, because I was about to talk about like the her being in her room, like plot line. I was just about to get right into that. Oh yeah, they they never go anywhere with that. They they don't. They, 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 they say it once and that's it. Progress as a character. Yeah. <laughs> And we're talking about the sister for the for the listeners. Yeah, the the sister is just a oh boy. That's a whole story. Basement like that. <laughs> but anyway, the the sister is a character who has no character, and yeah. yet most of the problems with the show start with her. Like either she's just used for like plot motivation, or she's just a flat like not even like really important to the show at all. It's just like she she has the most screen time. She's basically, time, she's but she basically does the there less. for she's basically there for fan service. Yeah, she's a plot device at best. Yep. Device. And uh, the the one plot with her that that the that carried through like the whole series is that she's like trying to leave her room and become like more sociable, but she doesn't progress as a character she's at the exact same place when the series ends as when it began yes it's it's so ridiculous like we wasted so much time on stupid plots that went nowhere and thanks to that none of the characters actually like grew as characters yeah the, it's that but it was the only character that actually somehow did it is elf girl um, and uh What's another, like, because we're going episode by episode. So after we're introduced to uh, Elf, who's the next character that they introduce us to? I think it was the, the purple-haired haired chick. Yeah, but she comes out, like, other... she comes way later. Does she? Does she? I think she comes in, like, halfway through the season because she gets introduced when they're doing the whole, uh, the contest. Oh, where yeah. Where uh, each writer submits a short story to uh, win the prize of, the the publishing spot which is another subplot that they set up and then resolve in the same episode yep it, you it, think that they would make this conflict the the driving force of the whole season but no <laughs> they solve it like the same episode they bring it up yep it is so ridiculous like the, the way it gets solved is literally one newspaper saying oh top contestant forfeit literally yeah, that yeah cuz she read <laughs> too many words <laughs> <laughs> that was the actual like reason she broke the rules and, and like the thing was each uh, female character in the series gets like they force a romantic like pairing with the main character yeah like they're each roped into this shit except for the manager uh the library girl but even she had, like, that moment towards the end of the series where uh, she kind of teased marrying the main character for his money. Yeah, she, uh, she she's, like, at the end, just, like, starting to get in. Like, she's like, oh, now they're... They, the they started character. to go that route. They started mm -hmm. uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudging us towards that. And uh, the other guy that gets introduced at towards the end of the series. Those are the only three characters I can think of that aren't into the main character. Yeah. 
that's that's definitely because every other character and we get introduced to a lot of characters are just like yes we want to get in that brother's pants and the little sister is not even a skew she you know what i'm i i don't even man i i, I want to just get to the the thick plot but dang it's like the sister the little sister she's you thought the high schooler was the horniest by like manipulating the brother and just trying to oh, get down no. his pants the sister's the worst the sister's a lesbian who likes her brother, who will do anything to take panties from anyone. She will, like, steal your panties. She's so obsessed with getting, like, references to draw for, like, her erotic art. Like, remember the episode where the schoolgirl visits their house for, like, the third time? Yes! And uh, she agrees to be the sister's model for, like, drawing. And they they tie her up and, like, put a bandage. Not a bandage. Bondage. What's what it called? Well, yeah, bondage. But they tie her up, you know, they, they uh, put a, like, cloth over her eyes. You know, they bound, they tie her up. It's bondage. That's clearly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Then they fucking, like, the sister, like, it's sexual assault is what she does. Yeah. she takes off all her clothes and shit. Yeah, like, like while oh she's God, like, man. while she's like saying like, this doesn't feel right. The little sister comes around, sneak around, and then just pulls down her panties and takes it from her. And then the literally in the episode, the high school girl starts tearing up. Literally, yeah, like, she, like she's actually crying over this. And I, I just remember watching that, being like, these are horrible fucking people. Like I can't believe they would do this to this girl. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and like, keep in mind, this is the same character that we started out hating, but this episode made us sympathetic to her because all she wanted to do was get the sister to go to school and befriend her. Yeah, <laughs> and, and she ended up getting sexually assaulted instead. It's so ridiculously crazy. <laughs> it's sick, it's what it is. <laughs> um. And an another thing I, I hate about the series is that there are so many characters that get introduced that then never show up for, like, several episodes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I think uh, the schoolgirl, the, the bondage episode was the last time she showed up until the very end of the series. Yeah, she, like, there was a massive gap between her stuff. That's, like, the first example of when you can tell that either... The writing in the series was very rushed, and they didn't have a lot of time to get uh, all the plots in place. Or, it's incredibly poorly paced, and they didn't know how to write the story. Because <laughs> there's so many, like, uh, plot lines and characters that get introduced that are either forgotten or resolved very quickly. Yeah. Oh so it gosh. just leads to an entire series of uh, dumb shit happening... Uh, you not caring that dumb shit is happening, and the characters going nowhere as characters. Yeah, and especially like the part where, like, I think we're already at that part where the little sister, she's like, she two times she like does this one scene where she like comes down the stairs and they're making like a dramatic scene. It's like, oh my gosh, she just left her room, and like, it's like, okay, well, why can't she leave her room? Why, why, why is it so important? What, that... What's the problem? Yeah. So, like... I, so then they get to an episode where they, they explain why she doesn't leave her room. And it's literally the, the Padme of the pre-sequels. Uh, she, she doesn't want to leave her room because she, she, she doesn't want to. That's why she yeah, can't that's leave her the room. The excuse that she gives is that she doesn't want to leave her room. That's why she never leaves her room. And I'm like, my gosh, this could be fixed so easily. And I went into a whole tangent about, it's like, okay, how do you fix this? Make her crippled. Straight up. You, it's like, you, you break her legs, you have her in the room, now you have a good reason why she can't leave the room. So that when you she know, does come out like, the room, then it's a bigger deal. You know, it's funny because, like, uh, because, like, in the first episode, doesn't the, doesn't the main character... Like thought, like didn't he thought that um, she didn't leave her room because of him? Yeah. Like there was some like um, tensions within the family, like that was yeah. established. Yeah, and so like he thought that like, man, that's wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, they they waited until like um, episode eleven of a twelve episode series to give us the backstory 
for the sister and the brother that honestly I thought that episode was the best in the entire series because it's the only one that had an interesting story that actually built up how these characters like met and their backstory leading up to the series like they, they at least gave us something you know it felt like it felt genuine. Like I liked the story they were telling. I also I have to say I had the complete opposite effect. I mean, you go ahead, not, Space Man. I was I was no oh, yeah. longer interested <laughs> in anything that was going on in the episode. Like as soon as it started, I was like I zoned out because already at this point, at the end of the season, at the end of it, there's only one episode left, and that's that's when we get the backstory. Like yeah, okay, that's... if it was earlier, like. You you would still be like, okay, you have the two main characters. That's who you focus at. But at this point in the series, there's a lot more more interesting characters than these two who are supposed to be the main characters. And like, yeah, for, me, for me, personally, I just, I couldn't. I just, that episode was just a filler for me. Even though it's supposed to be like playing as a backstory, it, did, it failed to do its part because it's at the end. Who cares? Yeah. Well, I want to see more about the relationship between the elf girl and the brother. Or, I don't know, they're rioting because they're all writers, apparently. Yeah, you barely get any scenes of them, like, actually explaining, like, um, their stories and how they write said stories and, like, w- how their creative process works. Like, they never discuss the actual books that they write. So yeah. we never get into any interesting, like, conversations that don't involve sex in some way. I agree with Spaceman in that episode 11, like, its biggest problem is that it's at the end of the series. The backstory should come, like, either it should, like, be included in tiny segments throughout the series, like, build it up, like, give us small tidbits throughout each episode, or just have it all at the beginning of the series so we can set up who these characters are, what their relationships are to each other, like, we can get all the the information out so that we can follow the plot without any issue. So the fact that they chose to save the backstory for the end of the series is such a stupid move. Agreed. That That's the biggest flaw. And I, I definitely say it would have definitely been a lot better. A lot, lot better if it was given little by little throughout the whole series. But the fact that they dropped it all in one episode, that's not like... You're trying to pay attention to it. One, it's, it's not that big entertaining like everything else has been. Yeah, everything has been ridiculous. So it's like crazy. But yeah, the fact that it's... the backstory is much more tame than everything else that we've been introduced to. It's like, how are you supposed to pay attention to that? Yeah, when the, you have an elf girl going too, on a it's, date it's... and this little sister being all horny and perverted and trying to steal everyone's panties. Like the rest of the series has been all like, like uh, sexual shenanigans. It's been like a traditional comedy. And then we get the to episode eleven, and it's like this, uh, this like deep, somber like backstory as to how these characters met. And it's like these two, th- this has nothing in common with the rest of the series. Like we we're watching a totally different show right now. Yeah. Uh, the, I'm. I think there's more that we haven't got into because you mentioned something about the the sister that you hadn't gotten to yet, but it was like the worst part of the show. Oh, it was the it was the room, and like her getting stuck, and like. Well, no, no, it was something else. I think it was the way that they, uh, that they teased that she would get together with the brother. Because there's one scene in specific where, uh, I think the oh sister my gosh! asks him I know who, exactly she want, what... who he wants to marry. And he gives, like, a smile. I, I, okay, yeah, because it wasn't, there, there's this episode where they're all talking about their dreams, right? And it's like, yeah. oh, what's your dream? Oh, I want to be popular. What's your dream? Oh, I want to uh, finally write a book that will be, like, great in my opinion. Oh, and then they go to the little sister while she's in her disguise, and she's, uh, they're like, what is, what's your dream? And she's like, dream? Uh, uh, well, I want to be married to the person I love. And before this part... The sister clearly tells her brother, I love you. I want you. I want your meat. And the brother is like, oh, I love you too. As a brother. And it's like the girl's like, literally, give me your meat. And then the fact that she's like, oh, I want to marry the person I love. And he just like gives this big old like grin. Gr- like a, a giant smirk. And he keeps that throughout the whole frame. And it just keeps staying there for more than a couple of seconds. It's like, Oh my gosh, he knows exactly what she's talking about. And he's like, oh yeah, can't wait. And he's like, what the hell is going on? Why are they shipping the siblings? Like, you could ask that question of most anime, but especially this one. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Like, you already have a really good couple that could easily go out. Elf girl and brother boy. But no, they want to do brother and little sister. What the hell is going on? Like, I think the, the series would have been much more interesting if it was just a normal, like, slice of life anime about a brother and a sister, uh, like, trying to rebuild their relationship and trying to, like, actually like befriend one another again like after like being like separated for so long definitely like, it, it, like if it they had just all... cut out this the sexual shit like the this could have been such a better show yeah the thing is, it has all the elements it just fails to execute the right thing at all like the only time it actually gets something right is uh, somehow with elf girl and boy and where they're just like chatting one to one no other characters when they're just chatting with each other, like a normal conversation. Like, how is that the best part of this show? When the two characters, like a side character and the brother, is literally having just a genuine conversation. Like, my god! So ridiculous! Yeah, the, the amount, like, there's so few conversations in the series that are actually, like, interesting to, like, listen to. Because, again, most of, like, the character interactions are based around, like, sexual stuff. Or, like, just general, like, comedy, like, nonsense. Yeah. Like, there's rarely a time where the characters actually try and get to know one another. And the only times when it happens is when it's between the brother and the elf girl. Which is why their relationship was the most interesting. Because they actually had chemistry. Yeah, and the, the, I gotta say, the elf girl was the most interesting because she was already... In, they already established a one... You wouldn't have expected it, but she's a model and she doesn't really write for like uh, as a job. So it's like it's oh, like your hobby. Yeah, so they, that's a curveball. Then also another curveball where she's just straight up like a pianist nudist who doesn't care. She's like, yeah, I'm a, pre a nudist like, pianist. She owns so she what? Is. Yeah, like, she owns her shit. Thing. Like what? There's no uh, I, like there's barely any characters I can think of that like, actually can do that. And she's all like, the yeah, other so characters, what? Characters like are like such like two faced liars. Who, who aren't honest about, like, the fact that they're, like... Like, the brother is clearly sexually attracted to the sister. Right? But he wants to lie to himself and act like that's not the case. But at least with the elf girl, she's honest with herself. Like, you know exactly what she's thinking and she will tell people what she's thinking. Yeah. Like, my gosh. The only... The only character... When it comes to having a good arc and actually some good content, it's literally the elf girl. And I would have never thought that would be the case. Remember how at the, like the end of the series, uh, when they all when the elf girl invo invites everyone else to her like her private island that she and her family own, because of course she's like rich. Um, and while they're at I thought she island, rented it. Was it? Because I thought it was owned by their family. I, I don't. I don't know. I can't. That's remember what I remember her brother explaining. Like, it has, but whatever. Point is, like, she invites them out to this island. And throughout those, like, those last few episodes, everyone else refers to the the elf girl as a Yankee. Yeah, they came out of, out of nowhere. It's like, everyone before calls her elf because that's what she was referred to as. That, that's her name. Then, then after, like, the, then the beach episode comes in and everyone's like, hey, it's that Yankee. Yankee. Yankee like, with no brim. Like every... Every like <laughs> couple of minutes. It's so stupid. Yes, it is. And like, I don't even know why they started calling her that. Because the only thing that we learned about her in those last episodes is that, um, outside of like family shit, is that her and her brother have like English names. That's it. Yeah. That's that's like the only reason I could think of for why they kept calling her Yankee. Yeah, there's no other explanation. I don't think they ever, like, say that she's not from Japan. Because she speaks Japanese. And she looks the same as all the other characters. So why are they calling her Yankee? And you know what? It's also the weird fact that they're actually elves. And not just regular people. That's who another appear thing. Who this series has, like, a magical twist to it that never gets explored. Like, elves just exist in this world. And I don't know why or how or for how long. They just are a thing. 
and they never get into that. Yeah, because like, was it? At first, we thought, oh, it's just like the 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 girl. Like she's probably cosplaying or some shit. Yeah, but no. Then her brother also has like the same like elf ears, and then like, then one of the main characters is like, oh yeah, uh, they're all elves. Interesting. It's like what? So elves are just a thing, and you're not you you're not. There's no explanation or anything. They're just here now. Okay, I guess. All right. It's so, so fucking stupid. Which is what I would describe the entire show if I were to do a review of it. Oh yeah, just definitely. it's <laughs> so stupid. I, I just imagine like you, like you just have you just make like a five second video and you're just like, hi guys, welcome to my video. Today we're gonna review this anime. Stupid. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch it. The fact that unless, you have to be you technically wanna... be brain dead to watch is the most ridiculous yeah. <laughs> part. You should not have it's to like... be. You, sh you should not have to turn off your brain to enjoy a piece of media. Like, it should be, like, enjoyable. Like, you should want to think about it, you know? Yeah. It's like, the more you think about it, the more it gets worse. Yeah. I, like, I'm trying to think of what else we, we may have left out. Because, uh... Sounds like Man, you guys tackle so everything. Much, like, th there's so much in this series that's, like, fluff. It has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, there's just so much filler. Again, I, I would never expect expected watching this anime from just, like, the first episode. I would never expected that the elf character would be the one character that I would actually be rooting for the whole time. Like, yeah. My gosh, that's the last thing I would have ever expected. Mm -hmm. And the, I, oh, I, and the... I would have not expected too that the little sister is the most evil one out of everyone. She is the most yeah, horrious, perverted. She she will steal your clothing if you're not careful. She will like I... go into your pants, steal your underwear, and, like yeet goodbye. And, and like her excuse will be that she needs like references, like for for how she can draw like erotic art, and like it's like the the, the question I always ask to myself was like. If she needs, like, references for things to draw, why doesn't she just look at porn? Yeah. Like, it's so much simpler. <laughs> and you don't <laughs> sexually assault people that way. And, like, every time, like, when she's, like, if they talk to her brother, like, after, like, a certain point in the show, show, she's like, hey, brother, can you find more subjects that can use their bodies? And it's like, you are what? You're basically asking your brother to go out there, search for girls to bring them back, and then tie them up just so that you can model them? It's... Oh my gosh. That literally becomes a plot line for the little sister. She she basically becomes the mafia of, oh, I'm gonna, you, you get their body, and I'll draw it. And I'll take their panties too if they're not careful. Like, my gosh. They, well, they're, they're, like, she'll just invade their personal space and shit. Yep. And, uh, the, the final episode, because uh, oh, we've pretty much covered everything episode. else. The last episode is terrible. It's it's not even a final the, final. It's not even like you would consider a final. It's like another filler episode. It, it feels like just another episode, but yeah. it's the final one. And like, there's so many problems with it. And the first one I'd like to get into is uh, we, we finally get to see the schoolgirl in this episode, like, for the first time in, like, like half a season. And, uh, it's so that she can provide, um, the sister with, like, a photo reference for a dick, because she doesn't know how to, how the male anatomy works or whatever. And, um, the, the photo that she sends in is of a character who, in the shot that she's, like, that we see her in, like, she's hanging out with, like, a little kid who's, like, playing with a, with an airplane toy. And uh, the photo that the schoolgirl sends to the sister for reference is of the little boy. And they, uh, the, the dialogue that the characters have after this implies that the schoolgirl is dating, like, the boy. Which, like, when I saw that, I was like, hold on a minute, what? Like, did I hear that right? Is that, is that really what's happening in oh, this scene? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's weird. I don't like that. Yeah. And then, like, what is it? Another strange thing that I was like, what? Why? It's the fact that the whole, like, series has so far just been, like, well, softcore. Just softcore porn, and that's it. But the at that last episode, they were like, straight up, yeah, we're just going to now go into actual porn territory. Yeah, you want hentai? We're going to give you hentai. Yeah, the, like, you, they, they actually blur shit out in this episode. 
And they even, like, have, like, little sisters, like, Ah, yes, porn of my own characters. Mm, I'm gonna make some even more porn characters. And she has, like, uh, the... She has Elf and the other writer chick, like, uh, stripped down to, like, their, like, underwear. Uh, just so that they can play Twister. So she has, like, photo references for art. And I'm like, why did either of them agree to this? Yeah. Like, Elf, I can understand, because that's who she is. Like, that's like she's just down for that shit. Mm-hmm. But the the other writer chick is, like, written as this, like, serious, demure character who's not down for any nonsense. And uh, in this episode, like, she says, like, I straight up don't want to do this. And yet she just does it anyway. Like, she gets strong-armed into doing it by the other characters. And I'm like, this is, uh, like... I'm pretty sure you guys are breaking some kind of laws here. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what we were thinking, like, at many points throughout this series. Oh, many, many points. It's especially the bondage episode. Like, that, that that's not right. That straight up was the worst. It's so crazy. That, 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 was the first, that was the beginning part of the episode, where the bondage crap. And then, at the ha- last half of the episode, then you actually get some actual plot about, like, uh, Elf Girl and the brother teaming up to try to beat the purple hair, hair girl. Yeah, in the same it goes episode. From, it goes from horrible to, alright, just you sit. It's like, what, well, how, why do you have that both in the same episode? What the bloody hell? And it doesn't, it, it has nothing, like, that first half of the episode has nothing to do with anything. Because the schoolgirl disappears for the rest of the series until the end. And the Yellow Sister never goes to school. And that was the whole plot outline of the high school girl. And it never happens. It didn't go anywhere. It, it just flat out did not go anywhere. And uh, the final episode doesn't even resolve the, the love triangle between the brother and the sister and the elf girl. Like, it ends in a no-win scenario. No one gets together. No one, like... Nothing happens. That's literally the end of the series. Yep. That's the best way I can describe the finale. Nothing fucking happens. Yeah, you you could just skip to the end, like and nothing changes. You you don't miss anything. It's impressive how much time they were able to waste in this series. Yeah, that, that is true. It's ridiculous. Like it takes effort to write a plot that goes nowhere. And not just one plot that goes nowhere. Two plots that goes nowhere in one episode. And and several, like, major subplots that have nothing to do with anything and also go nowhere. Yeah. So, yeah, that was uh, me and Spaceman's experience watching the worst anime ever made. <laughs> Which I'm sure people in the comments section will be, uh, you know, saying, well, oh, no, there's this worst anime that you guys have never heard of, and it's this, and it's uh, it has even worse stuff than Aeromanga Sensei. But, we're going to uh, have to check it out, so then we'll see if it actually is the worst one. Oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're, we're just going to open up a rabbit hole of, like, terrible anime. <laughs> we're essentially oh just going to start God. a trend of, like, look, of, like, finding the worst anime ever. Like, uh, I, I hate everything's like search for the worst, but instead of uh, reviewing terrible movies, we're reviewing terrible anime. anime. Oh my yeah. god. They imagine how worse that is. Because you're not just watching one thing, you're watching a whole series. 